Okay, I'm going to lead off. I'm Dr. Andrea Foskett. I'm the Department Chair, Science and Agriculture. Um, and then if the rest of my faculty could go ahead and introduce themselves, then we we'll move on to computer science and math as well. I'm Dr. Daniel Weggert. I'm an instructor in geology. Uh, we are. I'm right Mr. Keaton Erig. I'm the Agriculture Program in Coordinator and teach agriculture here at Central Texas College. Matt? Sorry, I didn't know if we were going technology. <laughs> um, um, my name is Dr. Crusili. I'm the mathematics department chair. I teach mathematics. And then we also have engineering within our department. Hi, my name is Sam Jackson. I am the engineering program coordinator here at Central Texas College. Computer science? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I wasn't sure how many faculty you had, Andrea. <laughs> Um, I am Dr. Oser. I am the Chair of Computer Information Technology and Systems. And anyone else on our session that wants to introduce themselves? Charlotte and Aubrey, maybe? Hi, good afternoon. I'm Charlotte Wesley. I'm the Advising and Success Coordinator in Student Success and Persistence. Welcome, everyone. Hi, I'm I'm the residence hall manager and also in student class and assistance. Perfect. I think uh, we've all introduced ourselves, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start talking about our programs uh, within the STEM career cluster. Um, we'll go ahead and start with science and agriculture first, and then kind of keep advancing through the slides. Um, I'll cue you in. Um, if, if you're watching the presentation, of course, you, you, you'll need to let me know when to advance slides as well. So let's get started with the science part first. Okay. Um, so this is just our overall contact information. Again, I'm the department chair. My information's on there. Um, agriculture is also part of our department. And so Mr. Keaton Eric, who's our Ag Program Coordinator, uh, his information is also on this slide. I'm going to hand this off to Dr. Weggert, who will advance through the science portion of the programs. Hello. So in science and agriculture, we have a number of different courses. We offer ke uh, courses in biology, chemistry, environmental science, geology, physics, astronomy, and then again, the ag program is part of our department as well. Next slide, please. And in general, the sciences are a really in-demand field. There's a lot of different uh, employers out there looking for science majors. And a lot of these jobs have very high wages that are associated with them because there's not, there's a high demand, but not a high supply. And also numerous crossover opportunities. So opportunities to go into another field or take a degree in a geology in geology or any of the other sciences and cross over into other fields. Next slide, please. And here at CTC, everything we're doing is trying to prepare you for an associates of science degree that is designed to lead to a bachelor's of science degree from a major university. So we're trying to get you ready as a stepping stone to go to the university, get your bachelor's degree, and hopefully even go beyond there. Next slide. So the associates that we have at the moment, we have two biology associates of science degrees in organismal biology, one in human biology. We have a chemistry associate of science, an associate of science in environmental science, and an associate of science in geology. Now, again, who's hiring? Lots of people. Government agencies are always looking for us. Universities are looking for science majors. Mining companies, manufacturing companies, research labs. And there's also, next slide please, a lot of crossover opportunities into things like forensic science, law, politics, engineering, all sorts of opportunities to take a science degree and branch out. Next slide, please. Mr. Eric. Awesome. So uh, I'm up. 
so I'm I'm in charge of the ag program. We're very fortunate here at Central Texas College to have a, I'm gonna call it a working lab where we get to interact with live animals either on the equine side, uh, if you're on the equine degree plan or on beef cows, because uh, the school has a small beef cattle herd and we have a, a, a pretty good size farm and ranch center that we get to utilize within our classes. So some of our classes are, are outside. Um, we get to interact with nature depending on which course we're taking and see how it works, uh, you know, firsthand. Uh, next slide, please. We also have a greenhouse uh, for those uh, students that are interested in a horticulture type degree or some classes are offered there. Uh, different classes are all, we do some different experiments in there and it's just a, a great hands-on experience, a great teaching tool for me and a great learning tool for the student to be able to, to grow things, different propagation techniques, uh, different methods. We typically try to have a plant sale once or twice a year and where we get to kind of bring to light all the great things that our students have grown throughout the year or semester. Next slide, please. Now, when we look at the benefits of an agriculture degree, very, very high demand. Uh, there are, we're very lucky in our location. There's a lot of different opportunities that are even coming new into town or into our area, our local area, plus nationwide. Uh, the same people that are hiring uh, that Dr. Wagger talked about previously, are hiring for ag jobs. Uh, the, the government uh, mining agencies are looking for people to reclaim uh, some old mines and be able to plant grass and be an, a, an agronomist for that type of situation. There is a lot of opportunity out there across the US, uh, in Texas and just here locally. Now there's also opportunities to be your own boss. Uh, if you if you love gardening, uh, have a large garden, you're able to sell that produce in several different ways, whether it be in a co-op setting or in a, a farmer's market setting, you have the opportunity to be your own boss, grow your own produce for yourself, plus to sell to yourself or to neighbors, excuse me, or to your local community. And you get to work outside, right? Uh, today is a wonderful day. Uh, you, and if, if you're involved in agriculture, today is not a bad day if you're here in Central Texas. It rained today. You can't yuck in my yum today. I don't care what you say to me. It rained this morning, so we're going to take that as a positive thing and move forward. We're one step closer to out of the drought. But anything we would have, you would learn here at Central Texas College, we would have a worldwide application towards it being able to apply it here, not just here, but everywhere. When you look at a plant, a plant works the same here as it does in Australia. Uh, it doesn't turn backwards uh, and anything like that. It works out great. So it's a great opportunity to learn and to broaden, and broaden your horizons. And everybody uh, in the ag industry typically likes to work with their hands. Uh, get to play in the dirt, get to put work on tractors, get grease under your fingernails, uh, all the good things. And that's a very fulfilling thing for a lot of folks to be able to work with their hands and see their, their success grow uh, over time. And it's always great to grow your own food because you know where it comes from, for one, that's a big draw. Plus, uh, you get to share it with your neighbors. And I've never seen a, a neighbor hated because they were given they were given their produce away to their neighbors, whether it be tomatoes, cucumbers, or even a good old watermelon on a good hot day. So uh, a lot of opportunity there. Next slide, please. So we have a couple of certificates of completion, uh, very much a, a one a one year, two semester type uh, certificate that you could get in ag industries or production technology. And so in our, in our outfit here at Central Texas College in the Ag Program, you can take these two, and then if you wish to still continue your education, we can lead that into, go ahead and advance. Uh, every class you take in that certificate would join into an uh, Associates of Science or Associates of Applied Science degree. So you kind of get your feet wet in the water. Hey, we're going to get this certificate, and then you know what? We're going to do bigger and better things. We're going to go get that Associates of science or applied science. And we can make those two pretty much work towards either equine management, ag production, horticulture management. And so most of these classes uh, will prepare you for a transfer to a university to earn a bachelor's degree, if that's you, what you so choose. We currently have a couple of students that are doing that. 
They're working on their uh, associates of science and agriculture, and they are moving forward and they, their plans are go to a, a large four year institution to get a full bachelor's degree. And a couple of them are even eyeing a master's degree later on. So the sky is the limit from here. We just like to set you up on a great foundation, like building any good building or house. We want you to get you set up on the right, on the right path and help you move forward to meet your educational goals through your educational journey. Next slide, please. So I think this kind of comes back full circle with the with the ag and uh, the science degrees. Um, you can kind of see how much on average the salary would be for any of these disciplines. Uh, several listed here, bio, biologist, a chemist, uh, if you were interested in physics or in astronomy or a physicist, uh, geologist salaries are also around there. Uh, so several different things, including your ag. Um, salaries as well and let mr mr eric comment on that yep and and don't when you see that <laughs> average salary of 30 about thirty thousand, you're like well, you know that's not a whole lot of pennies in the bank <laughs> at the end of the day right i get it uh but when we think about that number that's even factoring in the whole ag community uh where we're looking at very very low wage earners um from just the hand harvesting of crops because we can't mechanically do it all the way up to people that are PhD level. So when we look at that average, it looks low, but remember that's an average. So there's always a high end to any average. Uh, if I'm if I'm wrong on the on the math, folks, uh, please correct me. But there's always a high point to an average, uh, you know, from the calculation. So please understand that that's um, that that can definitely it can only go up from there. There is a lot of opportunity there. So. Uh, just please keep that in mind as you as you look at that. Don't let that discourage you because you can you can do pretty well for yourself and and move forward with some good hard work. Perfect. I think that wraps up the the science and ag uh, portion of this uh, STEM presentation. Going to move forward, uh, Dr. Ozer, uh, computer systems and information technology. It's yours. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so uh, first, I wanted to start out explaining that our department is kind of blended between the workforce and the transferable degrees. So you'll find that we have STEM areas and we also have business areas. Um, overall, our department covers uh, study and development of computers, networks, hardware, software, databases, and more. However, the computer science core is about using the computers to solve problems and writing that code um, that tells the computer what to do, as well as how um, to understand the mathematical and logical concepts behind those instructions. Next slide, please. So overall, computer science is about solving the problems, using the computers and coding, and implementing the solutions. And what I like to tell students is computer scientists can be the architects who design the house, but don't have to build the whole thing. Next slide. We have one AS, um, trans fully, fully transferable to any four-year public institution in the state of Texas. Um, it's called the Computer Science AS. It, um, it basically gives you the foundations of all the coding and the theory behind how computers are structured and how they think and work. Next slide. Uh, our um, sample jobs I have for earnings, uh, you can be a web developer, software developer. This is not an, a, a finite list. There is so many different areas that you can apply a computer science degree to, but these are just a few. Um, we have um, very web developers. They do programming. You, would, you wouldn't think that, but we, um, we merge in through uh, web developing to marketing. Um, software developers can be anything from applications on a phone to a computer to even building games. And then you've got the systems engineers and architects, which are uh, what I referred to before that do the foundational build before everyone else comes in to do their work. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty, pretty profitable field. My averages are pretty high. <laughs> so um, come on over and join me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ozer. So I'm gonna turn it over to Matt, Dr. Cruz Sealy. All right, let's rock it. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so we're in the mathematics department. And under my uh, my department, we have mathematics, of course, and then we have also engineering, robotics, and we have drafting and design. So I need to update that. So we have drafting and designs. So whenever, if you are interested in that program as well, feel free to come on over. Next slide, please. So we offer an associates of science degree in mathematics. Um, our, our courses are, um, we offer the courses that you're going to need for a degree plan, like math, the college algebra, uh, contemporary or statistics, and those, those will help with your degree plan. But then within our own program, uh, you're going to take college algebra all through the way through calculus. You're going to take linear algebra, differential equations, which are super fun classes to take. So feel free to come on over. Um, we are very transferable, um, so most of the, uh, mostly all, I can't think of one right now, um, uh, uh, institution in Texas, one college that doesn't take one of our, at least one of our courses. Um, so um, it's very transferable credit. Next slide. So potential careers in mathematics, um, you could become an actuary. Um, and so data analyst, operations researcher, these are people who work for like insurance companies who check the mathematics, financial advisors, things of that nature. And so our um, averages as far as potential earnings are also pretty high. Um, just a recommendation, if you have any outliers in your, um, your values, you might want to use the median instead of using the average. That's just, <laughs> so these are our averages that are, um, you know, considering everybody in that field. And it's always growing. It is definitely, um, they're always in need of somebody who, who has a mathematics background. Next slide. Why math at CTC? We have a video. <laughs> we don't have to watch it. Though, okay. Next slide. And engineering. We have engineering. So we have an associate degree in engineering at Central Texas College. Uh, we actually the student is prepare the student if they want to transfer to a four year institution to earn their bachelor degree in engineering. And uh, as you know, the engineers is high demand. You know, area field that companies look for engineers. Um, we basically, uh, engineering uh, program is under mathematics department because, as you know, engineers use math a lot. So this, <laughs> so that's why we are under the mathematics department. Okay, next slides. We we have also um, now, uh, as I mentioned, like we prepare the student uh, to transfer to a four year institution. We have a pathway now with Texas and M Central Texas. So that's when the student finish an associate degree at CTC, they can apply to Texas A&M Central Texas to earn their bachelor degree in mechanical engineering technology. There is also different uh, different areas uh, in engineering. There is aerospace, biomedical, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, petroleum engineering. And uh, as you see, the approximate salary is $90,000. And it's always, the market is always growing. I guess yeah. that's a video too. Yes, it's a video. <laughs> Robotics? So also in, under the mathematics department, we have the robotics degree. Okay, and the student, they can earn an associate degree in robotics. And also we have a level one certificate in robotics. Uh, so it's basically uh, engineering and uh, robotics and drafting and design uh, programs they are uh, different program, but there is a big relation between all of them. So, for example, the student they can they can decide if they want to like finish an uh, like a bachelor degree in engineering, and they take a certificate in drafting or a certificate in robotics. Is always they are all in, under you know the same uh, department because of the relation between all these programs. Next slides. Also, this is a video. <laughs> I think that wraps up our presentation of our programs within the science, uh, technology, the computer science, robotics, math, all of these different fields. Um, so over to you, Maricelli.
Absolutely. We would love for all, everybody to join the math club, <clears throat> math and engineering club. And so what we do in the math and engineering club is um, like a day to day. We meet every Tuesday this term. So if you would want to come by and, and check it out. And so what they do is they literally do what we talked about, like research where we can use this. Um, they talk about um, problems that are happening in the world right now and how we can use mathematics science engineering to kind of brainstorm to solve these problems um and then they always try to come up with like a really good project and we have fun too like we learned how to play new games like there's different J uh, japanese chess that i didn't know existed <laughs> and so they come together and they learn how to play these kind of um games and, and and you think about it you guys it's not only i always want to throw this out there it's not only about like the mathematics and things like that you really want to think about the skills that you're learning when we're doing this right and and i i, I know i'm totally y'all think i'm totally biased but stem is where it's at okay <laughs> i'm just like stem is where it's at this is what's growing we have things and especially in our area we have things growing like tesla tesla is now here do you know what i mean and and tesla is going to be using you know engineering drafting mathematics science computer technology like all of that is is required to be uh and you want to be you know competent in those areas to work for companies like tesla and apple and you know at&t and samsung like if you want to be profitable stem is where it's at <laughs> okay and it's super cool yes <laughs> yes, that's correct. We do have an ag club. Uh, we, I guess, took a little break during the pandemic, but now we are rocking and rolling. Um, so we are looking for students, more students interested in our different ag certificates and programs, and also just to be involved with the ag club activities. They do a lot of field trips uh they go to different um companies um close by uh and also like it's field trips especially like to understand new technologies like they uh try to understand the hydroponic system that's pretty up and coming right now for production of different produce uh lettuce and strawberries and what have you um, so there's a lot of different opportunities with the club to participate in, in different learning, um, hands-on as well, um, also from the beef production side of things, but mostly also on the horticultural side of things. So if you do have any questions about the Air Club, I'd recommend you contact uh, Mr. Eric, and I'll go ahead and put his information in the chat as well. Yeah, sure. We have um, uh, we have several lab, lab assistants on staff. Um, we kind of try to categorize them according to their abilities. So students can come in during all of our business hours, um, which is not the college hours. We're open until eight in the labs um, and get assistance with any type of computer classes that they have. Uh, we have um, what we affectionately call the morgue, where all the dead computers lay, where we can have you go in there and tear something apart and put it back together if you'd like. Um, we also have just uh, just now started offering our lab assistants to do online tutoring. You just have to reach out to the department so we can get it scheduled and set up. So um, our lab assistants will be able to connect with students via a WebEx or a Blackboard Connect session uh, to give guidance that way as well.
Uh, actually, I want to talk first about uh, the drafting and design program because there was no slides about it. So drafting and design is also a program that we have under the mathematics department. And uh, in this program, we teach the student, like for example, some classes will show them how they can do draft, uh, they draw like machines and we use AutoCAD and uh, a set of floor plans for houses or buildings and like HVAC plan, plumbing plan, electric plans, all these kind of, you know, um, different classes that teach them different things. So by the end, they should be able to do like a full set of a plan, for example, for a house that has all the, you know, m many details like about windows, about um, uh, the elevation of the houses, different things. So this is also a program that we have under the mathematics department. It's uh, it show the student how they can do uh, machine drawing, and in the meantime, also they can show them how to do like sets of plans for you know house or this kind of buildings. In drafting, in drafting, yes. <laughs> It, it show, because basically what, when you're going to be able to to plan uh, or to draw these plans you will be able to read it that's the thing is in uh, engineering or drafting and design these are like kind of a language that you learn like when you look at the plan there is probably a couple words on it but most of them they are samples so that, that the thing is the student will be able to to know how to read these samples and what each sample means. Dimension is a big thing in drafting and design, and even in engineering and manufacturing. So that's what we teach the student. This is the areas that we focus on when they go to a drafting and design area. Uh, if I could add right quick about um, the support that we offer to our students outside of class time, uh, especially for our science classes and ag classes as well. Um, and I'm sure we all do this within our departments. So I just want to highlight that, you know, outside of class time, uh, it is really important that you invest your time studying effectively using effective study strategies that would help you be successful in whatever class it is that you are taking. Um, and I can speak from a science course perspective. Um, a lot of the classes are very intense. And so oftentimes students need additional time with their instructors outside of the actual lecture or their lab time. And so I want to remind you to take advantage of those opportunities. We have a lot of study sessions that are designed uh, to meet like on Fridays when we typically don't have regular lecture time or lab classes. Uh, it's for you to go to your instructor's office hours to ask them questions if you want individualized um, support. There are group study sessions. Introbiology um, offers a lot. Anatomy and physiology, we offer additional study sessions, especially right before exams. Um, so we, we kind of add those additional sessions. And for the lab uh, component of our science classes, we routinely have open labs throughout the week. Um, and certainly on Fridays, because we don't really have too many actual labs scheduled during that time. So Friday mornings are all open lab time where you can go in and you have a lab instructor that's available to help you uh, with guided work or maybe you're just working uh, with your lab partners and kind of reviewing content again that you may have been struggling with during the week. It's important to take advantage of those those opportunities.
So, yes. Um, so I would definitely say, and this is feedback from students as well, is they constantly say, I, I took um, an intro biology class or an anatomy and physiology class, but it, it was almost like the lecture and the lab were two different courses. Okay, so... It, so some classes, some science classes, you have a lot of overlap of what you're teaching in lecture being reinforced with the hands-on activities in labs. And then you have other classes like anatomy and physiology where we, we partition our time, where the lab is a lot of anatomy and the lecture is a lot of the physiology, which you kind of have to focus on both sets of information in order to understand the overall concept. So yes, it does take a lot of time, uh, studying time, and yes, it, it effort. And so that's definitely something that I feel like a lot of our students taking science classes, um, that they come to that realization after you you start working with the material. It, this is a this is pretty intense. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, but we are here to help you be successful. True. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, uh, I just want to mention something. In the engineering, there is different fields, as I mentioned. There is civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, many different types of fields. But I just want to be sure, like you, you know, like you need to know that we are here to help. Uh, we come, reach out to us, and uh, we can sit, you know, one by one, and we can discuss your plan, and we can help you and advise you. I have, like, you know, you can come in and ask me, like, I want to be a mechanical engineer. I want to be a civil engineer. I can tell you or help you, like, tell you, you need to focus on this area more than this area, or you need to apply there more than there. Just an advice. We're trying always uh, to help the student. That is the main thing here. We, we are here to help. Uh, our uh, student success is the our priority is very important for us so anytime if you have any questions about um, engineering uh, please reach out reach out to us and we are we are here to help that, that, that's the main thing Are there any specific questions from the students? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay. Well, probably the only thing I want to add uh, as general advice to students, not necessarily taking a STEM related class, but any class, any college level class, is that you understand that it's going to take a lot of effort from you to be successful in your classes. But we are here to help you, just like Mr. Jackson said. Uh, it's important that you communicate with us because if you do not tell us that you are having difficulty with certain topics or that you're struggling and you would like us to explain it again or uh, work with you one-on-one, -on -one, if you don't communicate that with us, then we don't know that that's what's happening because we don't read minds. Um, so, I mean, I oftentimes when I hear this in my own classroom, that kind of encourages me to do something a little bit more right something something different to reach out to those students so it's important that you communicate if now we're gonna we're gonna assume that y'all are doing okay <laughs> and and we don't want to make those assumptions and then find out uh after the first exam that you weren't okay and that you that you needed more help that you needed more resources and 
a lot of us have all those additional resources, either via the publisher um, or our own resources that we put out through Blackboard. Uh, of course, office hours, open lab time, uh, you need to just reach out so we can help you. Uh, the one more thing that I wanted to talk about is study technique. I feel like a lot of our students struggle with that, um, especially if a certain study technique worked for you in um, high school, and then you realize that that doesn't quite work at the college level. Um, so I, I think um, it's important that you meet with your instructor because one study approach may work for a person or for one student, but it may not work for you. And oftentimes I take a more individualized approach where I prefer to meet with those students in person and see, examine how do you study and how you could maybe be doing things a little differently to help uh, understand the material, that's one. And the second is retention of the material because they're both important for successful uh, outcomes on an exam specifically. Um, so reach out to your instructors so that they can help you. I 100% agree with this. Really, it's uh, I, in my opinion, I feel like the most important step to be su successful in a class is communicating with your instructor. That is the main thing. And I always tell the student, if we can detect the problem at the beginning of the semester, then nothing, you know, we're going to try to solve it. And when I teach even mathematics, I tell an engineering, I tell a student, if you don't tell me like you have a problem with this section, I'm going to assume that, you know, everybody is good and, you know, every everything is easy let's move on to the next topic so re communicate with your instructor ask a question is very important these are one of the in my opinion one of the most important uh, step to be successful in, in the classes and again we are here to help that's the main thing right Um, no, I do not. I just concur with everything everybody else said. Communication. Bye.